Hello everyone, this is Valhalla Gaming TV, and this is the channel that plays everything so you don't have to. Today we are back again with Botany Manor, and this is going to be part 3. If you haven't caught up on the previous ones, I'll put the playlist on the top right of the screen. Go ahead and click that and get all caught up. Alright, let's get back into it. Okay, we got all the butterflies in. Let's keep going. Let's grab this plant. I found a plant room where you're supposed to put all these plants. So, I'm going to go and show you that now. Also, um, I was playing this earlier and I went to go load my save game and the whole thing was lost. So I had to speed run back to this part again. So if any of you are on the Xbox Series X playing this game, there's a save issue from the time that I recorded this. Okay, and here is the plant room. Apparently there's an achievement for filling this whole room up with plants. So we're going to work on that. All right, and then the plant we're working on now is the wolf glove. And we have to get down in that one area, but I remember there was a letter that we could probably use um, about the secret entrance. I want to know if there's a year on that or not, because there's four numbers on those scales, the weight. I wonder if it's a year that we have to put in. Let's see, is this the one? No, that's Willy the Builder. I think it's this one. I don't see any year on that. What about this one? Priest tool holes. Queen Elizabeth, all Catholics were prosecuted by law. Um, Nicholas Owens. Yeah, I don't see any year on that. There's got to be any, a year when that was made or something. So let's look around for more details. Wolf Glove. I don't see no year there. It is like 1890. And where was this one? And then I thought I saw a year before too when she was trying to get into like the college. I think it was like 1853 or something. Alpine Exploration. And we still don't know what mountain of the Alps that plant is from. But we got to get in there to figure that out. What's this one? Nope. Don't see nothing there. Let's see. The house is built in 1593. Let's try that. It was constructed in 1593, so 1593. There's a 1. 5. 9. 3. Yeah! Nice! It helps to be a little bit clever. History sleuth. Find the secret priest hideout. Look at this. This is awesome. So it looks like I'm gonna have to finish this whole game in one go because the save's not working. Oh wow. And this is where the priest would hide out. Not bad. Also these ducks, um, there's an achievement for getting all those ducks and in inspecting them. So let's keep an eye out for that as well. Letter from the priest. My Lord Grain. Grind? Grain? Uh, thou hast ventured might mightily in granting me refuge within these walls, and for such favor I remain internally indebted to thee. The cunning of little John and his establishment of this sanctuary both inspire awe. A saint he is to our brethren and sisters who have sought refuge from the harsh rule of Queen Elizabeth and King James. Pray extended my gratitude unto thy cook for the substance provided. A welcome to respite from Brother Michael's oft-repeated fare of leeks and potatoes. With the most earnest of thanks, I entreat that this missive shall not mark our final communion, and that our faith may endure unbroken. Yours with devotion, R. Plout. Some interesting writing he has. Alright. Oh yeah, we're in now. There's the seed. 
We found it. The small flower has long tubular petals. Let's see what we can do with this. Lady Mountaineer Club, first outing, 1858. Okay, and then we got... What's in here? Oh, wow. Souvenir coin. Souvenir de Mon Ascension. So they went to the Paris uh, Eiffel Tower. The Matterhorn, 1865. That might be it. Wasthorn, Switzerland. Grand Paradiso, Italia, 1885. Okay. So those matter. We gotta figure out the date. All correspondence. Let's see. To the above address. The Society for Botanical Science meets every second and fourth Wednesday from 6 o'clock at the assembly room. Rooms in Stroud. A prospective applicant must be supported by three existing fellows of the Society, along with evidence of or research showing his dedication to the advancement of the science of botany. Widows of existing fellows receive honorary membership to attend annual social events. This month's lecture is on the importance of laboratory investigation. Annual book sale. Publishers and collectors are invited to the annual book and periodic sale to be held at. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got ripped. I would imagine if she had a, a guy that she was with that she married... And then she was a widow to him. She would be able to, and that was in the botany. She'd be able to get access to it. I wonder if that happened. Oh, we got more coins. Ben Nevis, Fort William, Scotland. And then this one is Mount uh, Ventoux. Mount Blanc. Iger Gwyndwald and Crystal Palace for the Great Exhibition in London 1851. So it looks like the ones with years on it. Well, maybe they got years on the back. Okay. Uh, field trip journal. Here we go. 30th of July 1862. Today marks the beginning of an intriguing adventure as I joined Professor John Montagu. Uh, Montaga. I don't know how to say that. His wife, Anne, and uh, fellow botanist, Robert Brown, on our field trip to study British meadow orchids. Uh, everyone's enthusiasm for the subject is infectious. The 3rd of August, 1862, Professor Montagu uh, gathered all of us to examine a southern marsh orchid, though upon arrival I noticed it had much more hooded appearance and could be new species entirely. When I pointed this out, Professor Montagu laughed and explained that he was simply testing us. Interest. Oh, repair the stairs. <laughs> that was a simple repair. Fixer upper. Okay, now we can get up and down here. We gotta find the year. Uh, let's see. Which other one do we have? Coin collection. So, letter from builder. Nursery rhyme, wind research, alpine. Let's look at the envelope. It has a stamp on it, and that's when they were up in the mountains, right? But there's no year on this. What about here? They said they were in the Alps and said they couldn't join it because they found a new plant. So that's not it. Not that. And... The Mountaineer's Guide to Alpine Exploration. So if we were at the Matterhorn, it'd be 20 FS. But I'm not sure where we were. And that would be floor, or the first floor. Okay, and I need to get that plant now that I have the seed. And this is the builder. What else do we get? I guess like we can do the guessing game again if we wanted to. Yeah, okay. 
But I, I'm gonna guess it's the Matterhorn. Let's try the first floor. Let's get this. Some soil. The wolf glove. Maybe a little water. And let's go take it to the wind. Also, there's an achievement for going to the top of the tower. So we're gonna do that as well. I wonder if the wrong wind will mess the plants up. If not, we can just really just go up to the top. Alright, move up. Open her up. Is that it? Doesn't seem like it. Going up. Is this what you want, Wolf Glove? Yep, not seeing it. Keep it going. Enough wind for you? This is a little stingy plant. Up the top. How about that? Okay, going up. Ooh, that wind's getting rough. It's getting crazy. Mountaineer. Go to the top of the tower. None of these are working. Okay. Ooh, that is loud. Oh! It's not gonna be that simple. Let's get... Oh, going up again. It's not gonna be that simple. I probably have to open multiple windows to make the sound that it needs. Well, that's no good. And then this thing is broken, so it doesn't even show. Wonder if we can get something to fix that. That wind got loud. Yeah, so we gotta know. Maybe there's a painting of some sort that tells me. I'm leaving the wolf glove in here. Gotta go search around some more. Okay, we're back down here where we found the seed originally. I'm gonna look at this coin collection. I think it has to do with something with this, um, this sheep thing. Wonder if any of these have it, because I see 1858 here, but I didn't find any coins with 1858 on it. Well, this one has a ram on it. Weisenhorn? Maybe that's the one. Because I don't see any other ones that have either a ram on it or 1858. That one kind of looks like it. Like a billy goat. Mount Ventox. And then... Okay. Let's try this one. The one with the ram. The Weisenhorn. If not, it'd be Mount Ventox, I think is what it was called. So, if we go to that one. Uh, Weisenhorn, Mount Weisenhorn. Okay, so 40 for the wind speed. And 40 is on the fourth floor. But this is kind of weird too, though. Because you have... The first test was on the third floor, it was 35. The second test was on the... Uh, or the, it was on the second floor with 50. But there's two on the four. And then there's one that was 45 FS and 40 FS. Then you said his, um, it's an anometer broke, so maybe that's it. We gotta go to the fourth floor, probably. Let's see if that does the trick. Is that the puzzle solution? Move up to the fourth floor. Floor one. There's two. Three and one more. Let's see if this is the one.
Is that it? Not doing it. And place it. That doesn't seem to be it. It did it. That's kind of weird though. It had 40 and 45, so it must not be right. Um, that'd be interesting if we had to do it like halfway. Weird. Okay, I think I found what the issue was. When we look back at this, there's pictures here. And we weren't looking at the pictures, I was just looking at the text. And it says the test number 4, or no, number 5, has 40 FS. And it's on the fourth floor and there's two tests. So there's test number 5. And you see how the windows are different? It's the, the second window is closed. The first one's half open on the right. And then the two above it. So number three and four are open fully. And that's how I got 40 FS. Let's try that. I think that's what the problem was. Another clue that I didn't see. So let's go to the first floor. Then this right shutter needs to be open. Now let's go up. This one's closed, and the next two are fully open. And hopefully this is the answer. And one more up. Come on. Got it. Yes, finally. That one was more difficult. Look at that thing. Very cool. Alright, achievement unlock. Wolf glove. Nice. The wolf glove grows in Mount Wisehorn, where the weather is just right. When the wind hits it, its tubular petals, a howling sound can be heard. Mountaineers are familiar with this flower and use it to navigate on foggy days. Okay, let's go down. Oh, we got a gatehouse delivery. Let's take this plan to the plant um, room, and then we'll go get that gatehouse delivery item. It should take us to the next area. All right, we're in the plant room. Let's see. Let's put it right here. All right, we got five plants in here. Go to the gatehouse. What kind of delivery did we get? Hey, where's the delivery at? Is this it? Um, dear sister, I'm so glad to hear you returned safely from your travels. While you were away, I changed the code for the library door lock. Each time I visit, visit is I know some of the grandmother's valuable items are kept there. The new three-letter code for the door is the three initials of my name. To make it easy for you to remember, I hope we can meet soon. I look forward to hearing all about your adventures, your loving sister. Okay. So, let's go look at the family tree. Okay, let's go check that out. The three initials for her name. Okay, we're at the family tree. And... We need to look for Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Green. Okay, so that's A um, E A G. Let's see if that's the right one. E A G. Where's that E? There it is, A, and then G. No? We didn't get it right. E A G. Okay, I think the problem with this family tree is that Elizabeth, um, wherever she is, and Green. Green isn't her last name anymore. This is her maiden name. Who's she married to? Okay, I think I found it. Her last name is Hopgood Household. As it says, her loving sister Elizabeth from the Hopgood Household. So her last initial would be H now. E J E A H is what it should be. Let's see if that's correct. Got it. Okay. We're in. Library hall. What we got here? Modern methods of teaching. And... 
A thank you card. Thank you kindly for the flower books you sent for my daughters. To this day, they still show an interest in learning more about plants and paintings. I am keen that my daughters have access to a good education. So I hope you don't mind me putting it upon you that you might be able to teach them somehow. Your dedication and knowledge seems so rare and inaccessible elsewhere for young girls like mine. I hope you will consider my proposal. Sincerest regards, Olive Campbell. Okay, she was teaching her daughters. That's cool. She's the botanist commander. What's in here? This place is so big. Botanical allies. Ooh, look at that. Four new plants added. Ooh, it's getting crazy now. Let's see. Okay, we got... Alright, we got Nightfall. A vaguely... I vaguely recall my grandmother studying the Nightfall when I was young. Sapphire Gloom. Judging by the name, I don't believe this to be an edible mushroom. Ooh, a mushroom. Cradle Fern. The past years, these ferns have drastically declined on the banks, so I feel compelled to research any changes in their environment. And Brook Chalice. My friend wrote to me about the Brook Chalice, which made me want to research them. Okay, so that one's in the attic. This is the master bedroom study and grandma's vault. Um, so I imagine we can find one in the study real quick. What do we got here? The Fox and the Crow. One evening, a fox was in search of something to eat for dinner. He saw the crow sitting on a tree branch, holding a big piece of tasty cheese in her beak. So, the fox came up with a plan. He walked up to the crow and complimented her shiny black feathers. The crow was suspicious of the fox and kept her beak tightly closed on the cheese. The fox kept on charming the crow, describing her as the most majestic of all birds with a big strong beak. Oh, what a song that beak must make. It must be the song of a queen. Please, beautiful crow, let me hear it. Flattered by the praise, the crow forgot all about her suspicion and also her dinner. So she opened her beak wide to utter her loudest caw and down fell the cheese straight into the fox's open mouth. Well, that's a smart fox. Oh, look at this. Ooh. Okay, we gotta figure out what symbols we gotta do with that. Looks like a, a pattern of five. Let's look around here. See if we can find more stuff. We got a book. Wonders of the Night Sky. A pretty cool window. Okay, let's go up top. We got a staircase to climb. What's this? The golden fish. One bright morning, a poor fisherman caught a shining golden fish. The fish cried, Please let me live. I'm not a fish, but a prince, enchanted by a wicked spell. So the fisherman let the fish go free. When the fisherman's wife learned of this, she demanded the fish grant a wish in return for its freedom, a cottage instead of a hovel where they lived. So the fishermen returned to the shore and the fish granted their wish. But the wife was greedy and demanded riches, a palace, and servants. All the while the ocean became darker and the shore was black with dirt. Finally the wife wished to be so powerful that she could grant wishes for herself. In return for this greedy request, the fish revoked all of the wishes it had granted. After that the ocean became blue again, the shore clean, and the fishermen never saw the golden fish ever again. Probably not be greedy. So that's another symbol. We saw a fox, a crow, and a fish. What's this? The New Year's Ball. Your company is respectfully solicited at a New Year's Ball to be given at Somerset Hall. Thursday 4th, January 1860. Supper is at 6 o'clock. Good music in attendance. E. Grimes proprietor. Scribbled on the back. Cousin, wash your hands and accompany me. You won't find a husband at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> You must find a man and stop with your plants. Okay, let's see what we got. Ooh, we got another symbol. The rabbit. So it's the hare. The hare and the tortoise. This is a uh, pretty common one. Let's go through this. At midday, a hare and a tortoise 
took a walk together. The hare moved quickly and then noticed the tortoise struggling to keep up. The hare laughed and challenged the tortoise to a race. The tortoise accepted. A course was decided and the race began. The hare immediately leapt out of sight, but then laid down to take a nap. Sure, the tortoise would never catch up. The tortoise plodded slowly on, making his way towards the finish line. When the hare awoke from his nap, he opened his eyes just in time to see the tortoise crawl slowly across the finish line. The proud hare had been so sure that he would win, and underestimated the tortoise. As the tortoise crossed the finish line, he exclaimed, slow and steady wins the race. Indeed. Never fail to underestimate a tortoise. The rising sun. Okay. I think the stories are important. I think they are going to tell like the order. So let's see what we got here. We got the hare, we got the crow, we got the sun, the fish, and the moon. Okay. So the crow. Let's see how we can figure this out. I think the wonders of the night sky. Is it order in the order I found them? So the first one was the crow. I don't think that's the case. The night sky. And then I'm pretty sure it was the fish. And then the air. And then the sun. So the fish. Air. Sun. That's not it. Okay. We gotta figure this out. One evening. Okay, so we got evening and the crow. Alright, and then what about the other story? On the bright morning. At midday. Interesting. The rising sun. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is what we gotta do. We gotta go day to night cycle. Let's see. So the rising sun. In the morning. Midday. Evening. Night. Yeah. We got it. Grandma's vault. Heck yeah. It's always satisfying when you uh, solve a puzzle. Let's see. Sunset painting, 1st of May, red, orange, yellow, pink. Sunset, May 22nd. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what these mean yet, but let's look around and see if we can find more information. Old newspaper. The London Record, a weekly journal of literature, science, and art. Number 159, volume 7. For the week ending 9th May 1829, price one penny. It only cost a penny back then? Cheap as heck. Lindley appointed chair of botany at University College London. After an esteemed early career as assistant secretary to the Horticulture Society, and admission and one of the youngest ever fellows of to the Linen or Linian Society, Don Lindley plans to elevate the science of botany. He spoke thus in his inaugural lecture. It has been very much the fashion of late years in this country to undervalue the importance of this science and to consider it an amusement for ladies rather than an occupation for the serious thoughts of a man or of men. Uh, Lindley also challenged the Lin Linian classification system and proposed many changes. Okay, so they basically looked at botany as something that just women enjoyed and wasn't a serious study. I would say botany is a serious study. That's how we get a lot of our medicines and stuff from plants. Important to understand them. Nightfall. Alright. Ooh, we got a key. For the study. What's this one? Nightfall progress. 
May, uh, Mary Green Research Notes 1830 to 1831. I've been trying to encourage the Nightfall Bloom for a little while now. I'm determined to prove it's more than just a myth. So far I have deduced that the flower opens at sunset, and only during a particular time of year. When exactly that occurs still remains a mystery to me. I shall plant a few more seedlings tomorrow and continue my research. Task for this month. Monitor Nightfall Seedling. Rose Planting List. Collect Field Samples Seed Collection. Okay, so... Hmm. I would imagine a certain types of colors are what's going to help it uh, promote its growth. We got to figure out which ones. It's all sunset, it seems. Yeah. And they're all different months. April, October, July, May. Oh, there's two Mays. Okay. Well, we got a key. Let's head up to see if we can find the study. And I thought there was a door there. No doors. Yeah, I think we gotta go back. Downstairs. Here we go. Unlock the door. Ooh, this is cool. All the way to the ceiling. January 1890. Letter from Anne. My dear friend, I've been pondering these last weeks what could be the best way to see your remarkable flora reach the wider world. Since it is so seldom, we are able to see our work published. Considering your uncle's reputation in the scientific field, have you considered asking him to publish your herbarium under his name? It may not give you the recognition you deserve personally, but it would be a way to reach your goal of adding to the scientific record on botany. Do consider it. I would hate for such an important research to stay hidden away. With the warmest regards, Anne. That sucks. All that work and not being recognized for it. Collected and researched by Professor J. Montague. Meadows, Orchards of Britain. Let's see what else we got around here. Ooh, looks all this. Another puzzle. Oh, are those eggs? Golden mallard egg, yeah, those are eggs. Oh, we got a seed. You got the sapphire gloom. Nice. What else we got? We do have this over here. Tree diseases. Red tree pox. If a tree is infected with red tree pox, many small red spots will be visible on the bark. It can usually be cured by adding fertilizer to the soil of the tree. Hypoxylon. Hypoxylon causes black patches to form on the bark of the tree. It is usually a sign that the tree is lacking in hydration and won't stay alive for much longer. Root parasite. The root parasite forms purple rings on the bark and the roots... Uh, the parasite leaches the nitrogen that the tree retrieves from the soil will eventually cause the tree to dry out and lose all of its leaves. There is currently no known cure. Bark rust. Bark rust is a disease that isn't very harmful to the tree. It is usually caused by excess hydration and too much sunlight. Man, trees get diseases too. That's pretty cool. And let's see. Mushroom food sources. Just like plants, fungi need food sources to grow strong and healthy. However, some fungi haven't always had access to nutrients through soil and have evolved to retrieve it in different ways. This means they have become carnivorous uh, because they only acquire nutrients they need by consuming living organisms such as flies, bugs, and plants. Some mushrooms even get their nutrients from feeding on another type of fungus or parasite. Mushrooms growing on a tree is usually a sign that they are consuming the tree. So you should remove them immediately. Not always the case. I want, yeah, if that's true, I didn't know that. Arabella, I have some more books for the department that may be of interest for your research. One I recall was a favorite of your father's. If you have any trouble when you visit the college, tell the secretary you are collecting materials for your uncle. So long as they are returned before the summer ends, the professors won't notice. Best of luck in your research, Uncle Theodore. Okay, so... The mushrooms... Eat the trees. Or they eat plants. Not plants, but uh, bugs and stuff. Which, I see bugs near. On the paintings. Oh! A tree down here. 
Can we get the mushroom to go and uh, eat that tree? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Let's get that mushroom going. Or what were the clues? Sapphire, mushroom book, and probably tree disease. Yeah. Okay, was there a plant thing in here? I didn't see one. We can just go downstairs and do it. There's one right out in the front. So let's plant the mushroom. And we should be able to get that seed to be uh, grown and eat it. Let's go like this. Potting soil. And sapphire gloom. Water that bad boy. Yeah. And uh, eat the tree. Mushroom. Look at that. Oh. That is awesome. Oh, it helped the tree grow. That was really cool. And we grew the sapphire gloom. The sapphire gloom is a widely misunderstood mushroom. It grows commonly on trees, and as opposed to popular belief, the mushroom consumes its parasites rather than the tree itself. Ah. Okay, so it eats all the bugs, and it helps the uh, tree grow. Very cool. Hey everyone, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. On the bottom of the screen, if you like, comment, share, subscribe, you can support the channel. Also, check out the videos above. That'll take you to more content from Valhalla Gaming TV. Thanks again. Later.